All right, everybody. Um, thank you for being here today. Um, I appreciate your time. Um, just as an FYI, this webinar is being recorded and will be sent out to some of the other fire departments. I know um, we had a bunch of uh, fire departments from across the district that were wanting to attend. Um, so they'll probably hop on at some uh, later point. So I'm going to just kick us off. Again, I'm Michael Stadelmeyer. I'm with Congresswoman Tenney's office. We're joined here today with Alvin Matthew, who is our FEMA AFG specialist. He is going to be presenting on the upcoming AFG. Um, so if there are any questions, feel free to um, have that after. Um, and if possible, what's going to happen is um, we are going to just get ourselves started here in just a minute. Um, give me just one quick second. I'm just having a little bit of a tech issue. Okay, I think I have that resolved. Um, all right, so I'd like to introduce uh, Alvin, um, Alvin Matthew from FEMA. Um, Alvin, I'll hand things off to you. Great, great. Um, let me just open up my screen. Michael, can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Everybody great. should be able to see that. Great, great. All right. Uh, thank you, Michael, for the introduction. Uh, welcome, everyone, to the 2023 version of the Assistance to the Firefighter Grants Program Application Development Workshop. Uh, for, some of, for some folks that are with us today, the seasoned AFG veterans that joined us on previous webinars, you're going to notice some of these slides in the presentation are things you've already um, <clears throat> seen. So forgive me if some of this is repetitive but I would like to really hit on and highlight some of the most important information for the 2023 application. This presentation will help you prepare and apply for when the application comes out this fall. Uh, also, um, after this presentation, I would, I'm going to email Michael um, <clears throat> the slideshow and a list of preparation tips you can do now to start preparing for the upcoming 2023 applic AFG application. So if anybody's interested, we could get that email out to you. Uh, so the first thing I want, to, I want you to know is that help is always available to you throughout the entire process. As you can see, you have many resources to choose from. One resource is the Regional Fire Program Specialist, which is me for Region 2. There is at least one in each of the 10 FEMA regions. Region 2, that's us, is comprised of New York, New Jersey, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. The next option is the AFG Help Desk. It is staffed daily by fire service professionals that know the program inside and out. And the last bullet contains a link to our website where you can download user guide to help you develop the narrative, develop the application. <clears throat> As I mentioned in the previous slide, help is always available. Aside from the regional fire, fire program specialist, these are the three important numbers you will need. For FEMA Go, if you do not have access or you do, if you do not have FEMA Go account, you cannot submit an AFG application. The application itself is located within FEMA Go. So you want to log into go.fema.gov and create an account. That is where you will submit your AFG application. For sam.gov, make sure you stay on top of your sam.gov account. The account expires every year. If it's been a while since you've logged in, log in and take a look at your account. If you forgot your username or password, call the number to get, get it updated. But most importantly, you do not want to have an expired account when the 2023 application comes out. 
If you let it expire, it can take anywhere between three to five weeks, sometimes even more to get renew your account. So picture it this way. Uh, Sam.gov is the middleman between FEMA's account and your bank account. We want to get you your money. All right, and last but not least, the AFG Help Desk. You can call and ask any questions on the AFG application or, and or its processes. And as I mentioned earlier, the help desk is staffed daily by fire service professionals that know the program inside and out. <clears throat> so today we're going to discuss our overview of the AFG program, a brief discussion on the award process, developing the application, and most importantly, developing your narrative. I'm going to give you some tips and tricks to help you successfully pass the scoring levels for some of the newer folks who never applied to this program or never got awards before, I think it's important to understand the process of AFG. It's important for you to know who is eligible for the AFG grant, <clears throat> who can apply, and who you will be competing against. This goes for a safer or the staffing for the adequate fire and emergency response and FPNS or fire prevention and safety grants as well. Fire departments and fire districts, whether you're full-time paid, volunteer, or combination, you report to NIFRS, NIFRS you're eligible to apply, apply for AFG grants. Non-affiliated EMS organizations are eligible for this award. If you provide medical transport like an ambulance corps or rescue squad, or you're an EMT and, a, and or a paramedic and you're not affiliated with the hospital, fire department, or university, you can apply. If you are a public or nonprofit 501c3 or 501c4, you can apply. Uh, state fire training academies, for most of us here in this room, this does not apply to you. However, state fire training academies is eligible for an award unless the state does county-based training. Then they are not. <clears throat> okay, so uh, this slide is to show you what you're competing for what's on the table, and essentially what's up for grabs. For the 2022 application, there was roughly around $720 million available. The numbers will change when the 2023 application comes out this coming January. For the 2022 application, the Assistance to Firefighter Grants Program, which is what we're discussing today, uh, you competed for a pot of $324 million nationwide. The SAFER or the Staffing for Adequate Fire and Emergency Response Program, there was 360. Fire Prevention, Fire Safety Grant Program, there was about 336 uh, million. <clears throat> so all that money I spoke about on the last slide, that $720 million, this diagram shows how that is broken down, spread out, and who's getting what. I think it's very important for you to know that career combination and volunteer fire departments all get an equal share of no less than 25% of all that money. I emphasize no less because that number can jump up through open competition. Again, 25% goes to career departments, 25% goes to combination departments, and 25% goes to volunteer departments. That's 75% spread evenly between volunteer, combo, and career. Then we break it down a little further. You have state fire training academies that only competes with each other, only get 3% of all that money. FPNS makes up that 10% of the award, and then non affiliated EMS agencies will get no less than 2%. Lastly, is the open competition that I mentioned earlier. This makes up 10% of that money. This means that 10% will be spread out based on the best application regardless of where they came from and when we will add it on top of the 25% that's already there. So that 25% for volunteers and career and combo departments can go up in percentages based, percentage points based on open competition. Just like any grant that FEMA administers, AFG has a life cycle. The notice of funding opportunity or NOFO is the first step in the grants lifecycle process. The NOFO is a very important document that outlines the priorities of the HG award and program. The NOFO identifies the next step. It identifies when the application period starts and when it ends. 
as I mentioned earlier, the 2023 application will open sometime this uh, January. Um, once you submit the application, we go on to the next stage, the electronic scoring, and uh, yeah, the electronic scoring stage. A computer will screen all the applications and based on an algorithm, it will compare various criteria. A lot of these questions are weighted, so they have a point value. What you select in the drop-down menu will accumulate points. The more points you get, the higher your electronic pre-score will be. If you score high enough in the pre-score, you then advance to the peer panel review stage. If you do not score high enough, this is where your application will essentially die off. It will never make it to peer panel and technical reviews and you will not get the award. The most important point here is to really focus on the high priority items marked in the notebook. I will go over these high priority items in the next few slides. You're gonna get tired of me constantly repeating the same words, NOFO and high priority items. This is because it's that important. I wanna stress uh, that high priority items will score you the most amount of points. The high priori priority items puts you in control. There are other items you cannot control such as the age of equipment or call volume. That's weighted and it has its own set of points. For example, if you're trying to replace your bunker gear, you know, your morning prides or your glow up extremes, and they're only seven or eight years old, you will get a very low electronic pre-score. You will probably not make it to peer panel review or peer panel, peer review panel. These are some of the items you cannot control, and I want you to know about it, especially when determining what to ask and what you ask for should already be pretty old. The older the item is, the more points it could get. Once you make it to peer review panel, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a panel made up of your peers. The panel is made up of a bunch of your uh, first responders. The application you put together will go to a conference room and this panel will read over all the applications and narratives. By the end of it, they will either recommend you to FEMA or not recommend you. If they do recommend you to FEMA, then the application will go on to technical review. In the technical review stage, the only thing that FEMA does in this stage is to determine if you are an eligible, eligible candidate. Uh, we're not going to evaluate you for points. We just want to know you. We just want to know you are who you say you are, that the information you put in matches to the information available to us. For example, you put in for a, a new apparatus and you say your current engine or ladder is 35 years old. In the application, we will ask you for the VIN number. We will research that VIN number and make sure the apparatus is 35 years old and not 15 or 20 years old. Once we go past technical review, we send out the awards, which usually takes about 12 weeks, 12 to 15 weeks uh, to process. And after that, we go at, right back to the beginning. And once, once again, the NOFO will be published for the following application period. <clears throat> All right, the NOFO or the Notice of Funding Opportunity. I cannot stress how important it is to comb through this document and understand what is being asked. Um, it's about 80, 40 to 80 pages long. And in your application, if you put anything with the red H, a high priority item, you will get the highest amount of points for what you pass for. If you put anything with a blue M or medium L, that gray L, the application will be that in the computer pre-score process and you will not progress to the next stage. Again, it's that important. You, you, you should be reading the NOFO from page one all the way to page 40 or 50. All right, so now we know what you need to apply. Let's talk about how to plan and prepare. This does not only apply to AFG, but also to the SAFER as well, and especially when you get to your narrative. You wanna make the application as attractive as possible to the peer panel review. One of the most important parts of this phase is to determine what it is you're gonna ask for. So before you start the application, I want you to conduct a, like a, risk, assess, uh, like a risk assessment. This will, go to, this will pretty much go a really long way, especially with making your application attractive. In the end of the risk assessment, you'll want to develop a list of items that you need to prioritize. And, and you just got to walk through your department, take a look at your inventory, 
make a list of the oldest stuff you got, the oldest turnout gear, the oldest SCBAs, the oldest rescue ropes, the oldest extrication equipment, uh, stuff that's broken or inoperable, stuff that just eats away at your budget because you have to keep getting it repaired. Then once the NOVO is released, compare your list of priorities to the priorities of the NOVO program. Make sure you focus on the items in the NOVO. Make sure you focused on the items in NOVO that have the red H, that high priority items I mentioned earlier. This is uh, what this means is let's say your priority is a washer and dryer, SCBA, and a, or a ballistic PPE. And you put in for a washer dryer, SCBA, and ballistic PPE. That washer and dryer and SCBA are high priority items, but the ballistic PPE is a blue M. Unfortunately, since that item is not a high priority item, your application will die off in pre computer prescore. It will not progress to the next stage. I just want to reiterate, you put anything on the application that has a blue M or gray L, we'll see you next year. I cannot stress enough to check and double check the NOFO. AFG is meant to give you the basic, the most basic firefighting EMS equipment, none of that cutting edge or uh, the latest technology. There are three different types of AFG applications you can submit or you should be submitting. It doesn't hurt to submit all three. Uh, you have your ops and safety application, your vehicle application, and your and a regional application. It's very important to know a micro grant and ops and an ops and safety application are the same exact thing. If you if your ops and safety application is fifty thousand dollars or less. You can submit it as a micro grant. It will get you more points. Non-affiliated EMS agencies, you're also allowed to submit three applications. State fire training academies can request many of the same things. However, they have their own separate applications. Within the ops and safety application, there are five line items you can put in. You can ask for something in the equipment category, PPE category, modifications to facilities category and training health and wellness category. Uh, right here, this screenshot is um, a list of uh, equipment priorities for the from the NOFO. Notice the red H for a nozzle, which identifies a high priority item and a blue M like a generator, which is a medium priority item. Again, as I mentioned earlier, you choose an item that's marked as a blue M uh, or gray L uh, low, your application will be eliminated. Uh, so I just want to give you a heads up that for 2023, some of these items may change. Um, so be on the lookout for um, the items in the NOFA when you receive it in, in January. As I mentioned earlier, another item to consider are micro grants. It's a pretty neat option and popular. Micro grants are an option under your ops and safety application. A microgrant is a request that is less than $50,000 and can be for any one of the five items listed. Just a note, microgrants are an option. If you apply for a microgrant under any of these activities, it then becomes your ops and safety application. For example, you cannot apply for a microgrant PPE and a PPE washer um, that's less, I'm sorry, you, you cannot apply for a microgrant PPE washer that's less than $50,000 and do a second application to request SCBAs. Microgrants are intended to help applicants that have not been successful in the, in the past. For each microgrant application, the system will look back over the past five years to determine if the application has been successful or not. If not, the applicant may receive up to um, addition, three additional points toward their pre-score depending on how many times they've applied and not received an award. Micro grants only compete against micro grants. Micro grants have their own set aside, allowing the program to use up to 25% of the appropriation to fund micro grant applications. For vehicle, vehicle acquisition, um, this is a high priority item and it's meant to replace unsafe vehicles. If the vehicle you're trying to replace has an open cab or jump seat, or it's 25 years old or unsafe, you got a chance. If the vehicle is 15 years old, good luck. 
the vehicle program is super competitive and the turndown rate is very high, but it doesn't hurt to apply. So you can submit the ops and safety application and include the vehicle and see how it goes. A regional request is a good opportunity where you can combine the application with one or more other agencies to request a common need. You could get something with the surrounded departments and you can brainstorm, network, talk about mutual, mutual interest that you have. <clears throat> uh, for example, if you all have a common need such as radios, and if your radios are out of date and want to get a new radio, you can go in on a regional application with your mutual aid partners and apply. Uh, two or more departments can also request to replace an apparatus or get a new one. However, it has to benefit all the departments involved. The next two slides are very important. After you identify what items you need, you will be asked a follow-up question regarding its purpose. The answer to a follow-up purpose question will, will make or break your application. This means when you choose this item you are requesting, you will be asked the purpose for why you are requesting the item. So my advice here, high priority items that you are requesting has to coincide with the high priority priority purpose answer you choose. For example, if you are requesting equipment that you do not currently own, you should use that first higher high priority bullet point, which is to obtain equipment to achieve minimum operational and deployment standards for existing missions. If you are requesting to replace equipment that is just no longer compliant, you'll want to use the second high priority answer, replace non-compliant equipment to current standards. And you see those last two bullet points, the blue M and gray L. Again, you choose those options. You will not pass pre-score. Remember, always, always, always aim for that red H, though high priority answers. All right, I just discussed the do's and don'ts for the equipment purpose questions. Now I'll discuss the PPE purpose questions. This is important because some of you have bunker gear that's getting close to that 10 year mark. If you're requesting bunker gear for firefighters that do not have it, or if you want, you have riding positions on your apparatus that do not have an SCB assigned to them, you wanna use the first high priority answer, which is increased supply for new hires and or existing firefighters that do not have turnout gear or gear allocated to seating positions. If you're requesting SCBA or turnout gear that is damaged, unusable, or unrepairable, but still in service, you will want to use the second high priority answer, that second red bullet point. If you are simply replacing your SCBA or turnout gear to meet current standards, you will want to use the final high priority answer, the final bullet point. For the last bullet point, it's that gray L, it's a low priority reason. If you choose this reason, your application will be dead and will not proceed to the next stage. Now we now that we've discussed the application types, let's talk about developing your narrative and how to make it stand out, how to make it appear the most attractive, the most compelling, and the most eye-catching to the peer panel reviewers. <clears throat> So the application narrative, we really want to know what's specific to your department and your jurisdiction. We want to know what is unique to you and the people that you serve. So it's really focused on yourselves. For example, if you're asking for a thermal imaging camera, you want to discuss why you need it and how you use it to support your department, as opposed to what you expect that is done nationally. So when, you're when you develop your narrative, you want to ask a friend or even better ask a another first responder to proofread the final product. All right, I say proofread, I'm not saying check for grammar or punctuation, which, it, which itself is important, but not as important as expressing yourself as a first responder in need. Remember that the peer panel review I mentioned earlier, those individuals, individuals are made up of your fellow firefighters, your fellow service members, your, your fellow EMS, uh, EMTs and paramedics. You want to make yourself relatable to a first responder. You want to talk the talk and use the lingo like a firefighter because that's who your audience is. Um, I suggest we don't use uh, brand names. For some reason, FEMA does not like using brand names. So stick to the type of equipment, not the manufacturer that makes it. 
And finally, focus on that red H, the high priorities of the program throughout your narrative. There are five narratives to write, all right? Four sections of the narrative will be scored and one not scored. The very first narrative, community and agency description. Even though this is not scored, don't be fooled. This is the most important narrative. You're essentially giving a description of your community and a description of your agency. This is all about you. This is the first narrative box that the peer panel sees. That is why it is the most important box. You want to be able to captivate your audience. You want to capture their attention right off the bat. You want them to care about the remaining four narratives. If you do not capture their attention here, chances are they may lose interest for the remaining narratives. I'll give you an example. Think of it as watching season one, episode one of your favorite TV show, your Game of Thrones, your Sons of Anarchy, or even The Office. You want to be hooked on the first episode. Otherwise, it's off to the next show. That's it. I don't care about the rest. That first show makes or breaks you watching the rest of the season. The community agency and agency description will convince the peer panel, peer panel reader to have interest for the next narrative. The next narrative, the project description and budget. Remember, I mentioned risk assessment in the last few slides. This narrative is where you will jot down that risk assessment you completed. This is gonna score you points. You do not need to get creative with the project description. There are four steps I want you to follow, all right? Step one, identify your problem. Step two, what is your solution to that problem? Step three, how much will it cost? And step four, how long will it take to complete the project? The project description should have sound like this. All right, so it just sounds something like this. We did a risk assessment and we found the following problems. These, uh, these items are super old and don't work anymore. The solution to that problem is, um, is to use AFG funding to purchase this piece of equipment and that this equipment will better help or better protect our firefighters in our community. It will cost this amount of money and it will get done within two years of the peer performance. The next narrative box, the financial need. <clears throat> Make sure you put together a breakdown of your internal department's budget, how much you have coming in and how much you have going out. You have any projects, um, if you have any projects eating away at your budget, if you have a 30 year old engine that keeps breaking down and you, you got to keep getting pumping, you got to keep pumping money to get it repaired, that's something you want to put down. You got to say what you're spending your budget money on. And this is why you can't afford to, you know, you get, you can't, this is why you can't afford to complete it uh, by yourself. All right, the cost benefit. This is your opportunity to show the benefits of the project as it relates to the cost. <clears throat> we want to know how far you can stretch that dollar. So this is where you want to talk about how this, how that small amount of money FEMA is going to give to me is going to help me this way. It's going to help uh, my department. It's going to help the community. And how we're going to keep uh, this many money uh, firefighters safe. You want to show how far you can stress that dollar. This is where you want to include any mutual aid benefits. If you give us this equipment, we're going to be able to help five other communities in our neighboring jurisdictions. Not only is our community and our firefighters going to benefit, we're going to be able to help this other community, which has a huge population in addition to ours. Lastly, this statement effect. Essentially, this is just a conclusion. You're going to take the main points of the first four boxes. You're going to compile them in a summary. You're going to talk about how this AFG award will help your community and the firefighters that serve the community. All right, so you're at the home stretch. You completed the purpose questions, you completed the narratives, and you're ready to hit the submit button. But before you do, I recommend you take a look at these documents and then resources that FEMA provides which is also on the AFG website. You can go on Google and tap in FEMA AFG program. And it will take you to our website where all these resources and documents will be located. As you can see, I placed a star on the self-evaluation sheets. 
The reason why I have a star there is because those self-evaluation sheets will be brought up during the peer panel review. So when FEMA gives a little briefing, a little pep talk to the peer panel reviewers on how to go about and reviewing the narratives, FEMA is going to say, hey, take a look, look at these self-evaluation sheets. These are some things to look for when reviewing the narrative. Also, uh, download the narrative development document. It will give more details on creating the narrative than what I just talked about in this presentation. There is also a monthly AFG newsletter. <clears throat> it would be a good idea to sign up on. It will give up updates uh, on the application period, on when the application, uh, application period opens, when it closes, when, you're, when you can expect to hear about your awards, and just some general AFG updates. Again, I will be emailing this slideshow and useful tips and tricks uh, to help you prepare for this for the, the 2023 application. Uh, and this concludes the AFG development workshop. So we're going to go on to questions and answers. Thank you very much, Alvin. Um, yeah. I will just uh, reiterate with a couple different things. Um, one, the application, the NOFO, will be in January, correct? I just want yes. to make sure Correct. that. Um, so it's going to come. Yeah, it's, it's, it's right now it's planned to come out uh, mid to end January. There's no uh, absolute date right now. Perfect. Okay. And then yeah. um, for everybody viewing this um, on the slide there, that is exactly the info that I was looking for to make sure that if you have questions, you can reach out um, to Alvin, you can reach out uh, to FEMA, you can get a lot of these documents um, as needed and, and take a look. Um, this is very helpful to have at the beginning um, so that you can take stock and inventory on what you have um, and what your needs are and be able to start working on your narrative um, when, when the NOFO comes out. And just as kind of a housekeeping, I know some people hopped on after 12, kind of in the midpoint of this uh, workshop. And this is being recorded and uh, these will be sent over in the slide form. So don't worry about it. Um, it was a issue on our end where the invite had said 12, the links had said 12.30. So my apologies for people that might've hopped on um, late and gotten that confused. So this info will be out um, for everybody to view the full uh, workshop. And if anybody does have questions as a follow-up, please utilize the chat function below. Um, there's a Q&A function as well, so feel free. We'll let that go for a couple minutes. Now, Alvin, just in case somebody's typing out their question, um, yeah. are there any other tips or tricks outside of this that you recommend for people? I know um, getting this workshop done now gives people enough time to take stock and inventory. Is there anything else that they should be looking for um, that wasn't discussed already or something that you've seen in the past that uh, it sometimes trips uh, fire departments up with their applications? Yeah, I, I, what I've what, what I've seen in the past is that uh, um, again, like the the, I, the the most important tip I could give you is to read the NOFO. Uh, the NOFO is essentially the Bible of AFG. It tells you exactly what you need to know, what's going on in the process, what's going to be the latest and greatest for this season. Uh, it's going to tell you what the panel is looking for, um, and also give you gives you. Uh, any updates regarding what's happening with this round of uh, uh, for AFG this year. But the NOFO is very important to read, very important. Okay, perfect. We yeah. did get one uh, question. <laughs> is there yeah. is there a need to provide matching funds? Uh, that's actually a good question. Um, I don't have the answer right off the bat. Um, what I could say is that uh, there is a cost share 
And um, so if you do get the award, there's cost share that you have to match out of pocket. Um, and it depends on the, 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 uh, the, um, the location where you serve, if it's a suburban, urban, or a rural area, it all depends on the on how big your population is and on how much you have to come out of pocket. So there is a percentage that comes out of pocket for each uh, award that's given out. Okay, perfect. Yeah. And then we did have one last question, which might be something um, just to reference maybe for the NOFO, um, but what type of physical items get most funding? Um, SCBA and turnout gear, that's the most request I've seen so far. And again, okay. uh, just, to, just to give you a heads up, uh, uh, for SCBA and turnout gear, that's, even though that's the most requested item, um, it's, a very, it's, it's probably one of the, aside from the vehicle grant, <clears throat> it, um, it's very competitive um, because there are departments out there that do have uh, turnout gear, even though it's not an FBA standard, um, that's over 11 or 12 years old. So, um, yeah, as I mentioned earlier in the in the screen or uh, in the, on the slides, that uh, call volume and age of equipment are 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 um, sc uh, scored separately. Um, in this case, um, age of equipment. If you put in, if your equipment ha is between eight and nine years old, uh, there is a strong possibility you will get a low score because some department in Texas, for example may have a department of uh, gear that's 15 years old, even though they shouldn't have a 15 year old gear. That, that's a, there's a possibility that, that that can happen. Okay, understood, thank you. Um, yeah. I don't see any other questions, so I think we can leave it at that. Um, again, everybody, the slides and the info uh, for this workshop will be provided as well um, for anybody that might've missed the first part of this not an issue. Um, so we'll make sure that this gets all out there. Um, I did just want to, uh, shoot, there's one more question for you, yeah. Alva, before we finish. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> so this is actually uh, one, we are looking to apply for a grant towards a UTV for winter response. Does that fit under a certain criteria? Uh, unfortunately, uh, well, this is for the 2022 NOFO, uh, UTV is not an allowable uh, um, equipment or, or a vehicle to purchase uh, to be reinforced for by the AFG program. And UTVs, ATVs are not allowable. Uh, but again, this could all change when the 2023 NOVA comes out. Uh, however, I do not have that, um, that, that information for you. Understood. Perfect. Yeah. So, uh, so yes, I, I think one of the biggest stresses from this is please be on the lookout for when this NOFO comes out so yeah. that you can take a very good detailed look at it. Um, but for now, it's still very good to take stock of what you need, what you're looking for, um, and also just working on your narrative for a very good application. Yeah. So perfect. Again, um, thank you very much, Alvin. I appreciate it. Thank you everybody for hopping on this. Um, again, we will make sure that everybody gets the information and in the slides. Um, after this as soon as possible. So thank you everybody for attending. Thank you everyone. Thank you, Michael.